I would say the most common symptoms we see are either excessive drainage, throat clearing, post nasal drainage, or facial pain and headaches. Those are pretty much the main symptoms that patients have. After those two, the drainage and the headaches, I would say snoring or obstructive breathing through your nose. Probably the rarest, or not rare, but the most unusual symptom that people don't connect is chronic fatigue. People that have chronic fatigue often have sinusitis. They're not aware that that fatigue is being caused by the body using energy to battle off the chronic infection in their sinus. A lot of people that come in, once the procedure is done, come back saying, oh, I feel so much better, I'm so much more energetic, et cetera, et cetera. So that's kind of an odd symptom, although it's the most common symptom of chronic sinusitis. Another symptom that people don't connect oftentimes is ear symptoms, ear pressure, dizziness, problems flying, problems diving. And that's because the drainage tube of the ear lies behind the nose. And if the drainage tube of the ear is obstructed, the eardrum becomes pressurized and that produces the symptoms of ringing, dizziness, pain, ear discomfort, etc. So another symptom that people don't often associate with sinusitis is the ear symptomatology. I think the biggest problem with the healthcare system, the way we have it set up right this, this at the moment, is that patients are under the impression they have to go directly to their primary care doctors, driven by the misconception that if you have private insurance, for some reason they think you have to go to a primary care doctor to get referred. The problem with the primary care doctor in treating these types of symptoms is that they're good at a lot of things, but they're not great at anything because they're not specialists in those situations. His only option is to give medication. And that's why we've gone to the general public with our advertising campaigns to get the patients to come directly to the ENT. So we have a whole spectrum of things different than the primary care doctors. And that's why oftentimes we see patients very frustrated, years on antibiotics, steroid injections, etc. They sometimes think the steroid injection is an allergy shot. There's a lot of confusion going on. Those physicians don't have all the alternative therapies that are, that are available for the patient. The balloon sinuplasty is essentially a procedure that allows surgeons to create more room in the sinus, more room in the nose, clean the sinuses in a very minimally invasive way using balloon technology that enables the surgeon to find the correct functioning duct to the sinus, the correct natural opening, enter the opening atraumatically, and expand the opening using a balloon so that you've reestablished what the patient was supposed to have to begin with. We're not in this balloon sinuplasty procedure creating new openings. We're correcting the closure of established openings that God gave every patient that, that were supposed to be there to begin with. That procedure is extremely effective in doing that because it allows us to, number one, identify the correct opening that was supposed to be there, and number two, it allows us to open the opening atraumatically so there's very little bleeding, very little discomfort, and at the end of the day, you've created a normal anatomical nose sinusitis pathway and it restored sinus airflow dynamics to the way they were supposed to be to begin with. It's a very effective, minimally invasive procedure that's done to allow restoration of normal nasal airflow and normal nasal airflow dynamics. We've incorporated a variety of unique procedures and procedural elements to the process. So rather than how most patients receive their balloon sinuplasty under a local anesthetic similar to a dentist or oral surgery extraction, we've brought in high-end, very technically competent anesthesia providers to enable us to put the patient under an anesthetic that is safe, 
short acting, extremely effective, and providing us with enough time, which is only about 20 minutes, uninterrupted operating time to do the procedure. We're the only ones that have been doing that specific technique that allows us to move very quickly through the sinuses using assistants that are well trained in moving the appliances a certain particular way. We use the balloon in a very very specific, different way. We've reconfigured the uh, Johnson & Johnson balloon technology that enables us to move quickly through the sinuses and also allows us to clear the patient and be done in a much faster time period and most importantly with the anesthesia provided provide complete procedures so we don't ever get in a situation like some people do where they start the procedure due to pain discomfort time bleeding they have to stop in the middle and then reschedule for a different day we're able to do not only the sinuses but we can do the septal work we can do the turbinate work we can do a lot of adjunct procedures that you couldn't do without anesthesia so it's not just the balloon sinuplasty with the Honrubia technique. It's a full-blown sinus procedure, the same procedure we would do in the hospital. So we are able to do septoplasty work, septal work, turbinate work, in addition to the balloon procedure, which encompasses a complete sinus procedure. And that's why we find our results to be superior to others, because we are able to do a complete procedure on each patient guaranteed and we know we can do that because we've done now more than 2,500 of these cases and we know what it takes to get the complete procedure done. Balloon sinuplasty is done as an in-office procedure without having to utilize the resources nor the cost of a traditional procedure with a hospital or a surgery center. So when you come get a balloon sinuplasty done, you are done in the office. You're not removing your clothes, getting in a gurney, going to a pre-op area. You're not being wheeled around a hospital. You're in the office, your family's close by, observing the procedure live while we do the procedure. And at the end of the day, you haven't really had much experience in terms of moving around or, or having any other issues with you know, time delays, emergency problems coming up. When your surgery is scheduled at nine, your surgeries, your procedures at nine, and you should be done within an hour. That's how fast this procedure is. So we can control in the office all the aspects of the patient care, preoperative care, intraoperative care, postoperative care, to even the level of when you leave the office, you leave with your prescriptions in your hand. No stop at the pharmacy afterwards. All the prescriptions explain to you how to use after surgery even a small warm blanket to take home with you that you use while you're recovering. So there's a way that the offices can control all aspects of your care versus going to a hospital or a surgery center where the doctor may be a great guy, but maybe the facility is not up to par. Maybe there's a problem. Maybe there's an, a, an emergency that comes in. So you never know what could happen to you going into a hospital or surgery center versus going into one of these facilities that just does this procedure. Everything is well-defined planned and it's an unlikely to have a situation occur where we don't do what we said we were going to do when we were going to do it. The, the biggest difference between balloon sinuplasty and traditional advanced endoscopic sinus surgery is that in advanced endoscopic sinus surgery to create space and to open the sinuses, you remove the tissue. By removing tissue, you create bleeding, inevitably. Once you create bleeding, and by removing tissue, you can also sometimes create pain. And in addition, which is the big thing that most people think about when they think about sinus surgery, is once you create bleeding, you have to stop the bleeding by using packing. So it's a very effective procedure, but it is and can be complicated by bleeding issues, packing the patient, pain, swelling, discomfort that are all related to the fact that you're actually removing tissue to create space. Now you take the balloon technology on the other side and we're putting balloons in and by putting balloons in we're compressing tissue to create space. By compressing tissue you don't get the bleeding, you don't get the scarring, 
you don't get the pain and you don't get the packing because none of those things that happen with traditional sinus surgery occur with balloon sinuplasty. With balloon sinuplasty done correctly, the patient is corrected by a compression of tissue in the correct locations in the sinuses that creates natural airflow and ventilation. And probably the most significant difference, taking away the pain, bleeding, packing, is that with balloon sinuplasty, you're creating openings in the natural pathways that were there to begin with. Versus endoscopic sinus surgery, you're creating pathways based on the surgeon's understanding of the anatomy and where the natural openings should be. At the end of the day, I've done more than 11,000 of those other, other types of surgeries, and I can tell you that no matter what someone says, you're never really sure where the natural opening is with the traditional procedure. You can think you're right, but millimeters in these situations can make a difference. With the balloon procedure, the way it's done, it is impossible to put the balloon in the wrong spot because the balloon is flexible and will only enter through the natural pathway and thus then expand the pathway. So that difference is why I think in the next five to 10 years, we'll see that the traditional procedure will be gone and will all be being done with the balloon because it provides, number one, most importantly, a restoration of normal sinus airflow dynamics. Number two, it provides a minimally invasive, less painful, more efficient way to fix the sinus. And in addition, in this day of healthcare cost, a much less expensive alternative to the hospital or the surgical center. And those are the key differences. The facial pain, the breathing, the natural nasal airflow, the, the drainage, those symptoms, which are the most common symptoms, are alleviated very, very quickly. Patients oftentimes come in with their nose completely congested and they walk out an hour later with their nose completely clear to the point where it becomes very emotional for some of these patients that when they can finally breathe through the nose after not breathing through the nose for 20 years, it's a very emotional moment for them to say, man, I can finally breathe through my nose. I can finally lay down flat and sleep. I can finally, you know, not have headaches when I'm at a restaurant with my friends. I, can, I don't have to carry my tissues around all the time because I'm not draining all the time. So the symptoms that patients come in with are very quickly alleviated with this procedure because the healing is much faster with compression versus tissue destruction. With compression, we see the patient's healing within two or three days because the patient doesn't have to go and regrow the lining of the sinus. They don't have to deal with so many scabs, so many post-operative visits. It's a very, very uh, effective treatment for the symptoms. The limitations um, really are age-related. I think we're down to about, in the office usage of the balloon, down to age just eight, eight years old. Younger than that's a little more challenging technically, although we haven't explored that as much as we could. And then upper age limits, we've upgraded up to 92 years of age. So really, I don't think there's much in terms of age limits. There are limitations in terms of your general health, if you're a good candidate to do the procedure in the office. If you have a lot of heart disease or other complicated factors, you're probably better done in a hospital. If you have extensive disease that cannot be cured with a balloon, massive polyps or tumors, Again, limitations are there. But I would say of the chronic sinusitis sufferers, 95% of those patients are candidates for the in-office procedure using the correct technique, the Honrubia technique, because we have anesthesia, just like you have in the hospital, at hand that allows us to do those complete procedures. Without the Honrubia technique, I would say no more than 20 or 30% of the patients are candidates for in-office balloon sinuplasty because of either anxiety issues, inability to tolerate the pain, problems with the septum or turbinate that you can't fix without the anesthesia. So our patient population is much broader using the Honrubia technique than the patient population without the technique because we have anesthesia and ability to take care of other issues that cannot be done under local anesthesia. remarkable to see the people that come in after being 
mistreated, misdiagnosed, medicated for years, come in and have a 15 minute procedure and changing their whole life. So it's not just changing their symptoms of their sinusitis, it's changing their lifestyle, changing how often they have to go to the doctor, changing how they sleep, changing how they perceive their, their health. So it's, it's remarkable to watch these people make a transformation once their sinuses are fixed. And what's even most remarkable is that since the procedure is so short in duration, you get results so quickly, you get a lot of feedback very fast of how the patients did with the procedure. Versus the traditional surgery, it may take two or three months to get the results. So it's not as dramatic as an impact on the physician when you have to wait three months to see what happened versus when you have to wait a week to see what happened. So it's, ama it's amazing. People come in two weeks after procedure and almost all the patients, that's their last visit. They're done. So you don't see these patients hanging around weeks and weeks and months and months on end. You do the procedure, you bring them back in two weeks, and the majority of patients, that's it. They're gone. They're fixed. So it's a remarkable healing phase and in addition, I think, provides dramatic results very quickly so the enthusiasm of the patient and the physician is very high because the results are so, so powerful. The American Sinus Institute solves sinus problems.